a huge warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers with me, George Dofamine. Today I'm on the South Bank heading back to Tate Modern to bring you the show, A World in Common, Contemporary African Photography. This is the third of three shows now open over the summer, along with um, the Clint Mondrian show and also Capturing the Moment, which brings us work from the Yagio collection, both of which I brought you on the channel. Um, I'm really excited about this show. I know very little about contemporary African photography and haven't read any reviews, but I do have quite high expectations purely because African art has been growing massively in profile in London on the London art scene and shows like In the Black Fantastic um, at the Hayward Gallery have caused me to fall in love with artists both from Africa and the African diaspora. Africa is obviously a huge continent with massive diversity and so I'm intrigued to see if these photographs cover that as well. Um, this show is on until the 14th of January and is £17 to get in so come and join me as we explore this new show which has just opened here at Tate Modern in London. The first theme um, of the exhibition which actually takes over three rooms concerns identity and tradition in Africa. Um, George Sodi produces a series of portraits of Nigerian monarchs Despite seeing real political power eroded in colonial and post-colonial period, um, these monarchs maintain an important role as custodians of tradition and also of political intermediaries. And it's a stately, dignified start to the show. Churai explores how colonialism has impacted people across Africa. These pictures, these photographs you're seeing, are from part of a series um, which is part inspired by the film I've never actually watched called Soleil O. Actors help recreate scenes from the Bible and history paintings to create alternative histories that challenge colonial mindsets. And apparently some of these photos relate to the film. This piece is from Apoku's Who is Wearing My T-Shirt series and explores our globalization and tradition intersecting Ghana. The figures you see here, the artists and their siblings, wear secondhand T-shirts and kente cloth passed down from their father, an Asante chief, and they're surrounded by piles of fabric. The theme of identity and tradition is then shifted towards the spiritual um, and both indigenous and imported uh, religious beliefs. Uh, Fanny Coyote combines spiritualism with an exploration of the erotic. His models wear fetish wear, as you can see here, and perform Yoruba rituals. As Fanny Coyote says, My reality is not the same as that which is often presented to us in Western photography. As an African working in a Western medium, I try and bring out the spiritual dimensions in my pictures so that the concepts of reality become ambiguous and are open to reinterpretation. These self-portraits explore spiritual practices as a way of connecting back to roots. Saye performs a series of rituals using sacred objects that come from African, Christian and Islamic traditions to reach back from Britain back to Africa. Yon Gapka um, I found really his work found really interesting. They document a journey through the sacred lands of Cameroon. As you can see here, these photographs are ghostly, showing a belief in spiritual spheres as energies and energies, as well as documenting anti-colonial resistance to German imperial possession. And in some of these, the artist appears as a kind of ghostly figure um, in the pictures. I was captivated by this image made up of five photographs from Senegal and it left me with lots of questions. The wall is inscribed with a Muslim prayer recited to elicit God's blessing. The man reads, the, the, God, the girls look away, absorbed in reflection, but what are they thinking about? And the artist said the meeting at the table becomes an occasion to reflect 
the contemporary human and his her relationship with society. The final section of the identity and tradition theme showcases a series of works which interrogate the role of the mask in the context of this identity and tradition within Africa. This section points out that masks played a live and active role in both ritual and ceremonial performances across many African regions. We see works from Nigeria, Angola, Benin here. And yet during the 19th and 20th centuries, they were both scorned by colonial um, oppressors, while also removed and displayed as very valuable objects in Western museums. And their active nature died. Artists such as Picasso also appropriated these masks for their own works. And the artists here investigate um, uh, th this role of masks. As you can see, they're the first film works of the exhibition in this section. Um, it's a really powerful section, actually. I apologise for the reflections in these works, this last, this last five works. The big central space, entitled Camda Histories, is the beating heart of the show for me. The exhibition looks at the camera's ability to challenge the colonial gaze and produce an alternative narrative of Africa. The first sub-theme, Family Portraits, explores Africa's rich studio culture which began in the 1840s and shows a huge range of photographs which explore the idea of the medium's ability to give the photographer agency. Lebo and Hange's highly charged portraits see her insert herself into scenes from her mother's life three years after her mother's death to create a new narrative. Miangani's pictures Country Girls are incredibly moving as they provide an intimate portrait of gay life in the South African countryside, in a country and indeed continent where homophobia is often normalised. While Kalani Abbas uses printing cabinet trays from his family's press to display digital copies of photographs and handwritten documents, and the exhibition tells us these images are used to consider how an archive contributes to the practice of memory and historical recall. A huge theme of this section of the show. It's a huge thrill to see work of Ghanaian phot photographic legend James Barner who opened the Ever Young Photography Studio in 1953 and really only gained recognition as one of the most important African visual artists of the last century in his 70s. If one wall sums up the whole exhibition, it is this one. In terms of the range of, of geography, it shows an artist, uh, a British artist of Nigerian heritage, a Moroccan artist, and a South Sudanese Australian, all producing excellent work. My personal favourite section is this one, Count History is the Living Archive. This central installation by the DDDK from Nigeria brings together hundreds of discarded box files designed to protect and conceal information. They're filled with archival documents and DK is clearly commenting on the power of information, something which colonial oppressors like Britain in Nigeria's case use as a tool to wield power. Congolese artist Sami Boloje superimposes colonial images onto contemporary photos of desecrated mining infrastructure. Boloje comes from Katanga, an incredibly rich mineral area of Congo that was exploited by the Belgians and exploited today to meet the global need for coltan. This constant cycle of scarring exploitation, prosperity and decline makes these images really powerful. I love the word figures by artist Malala 
Andrea Lavride Razan, um, maps were political and ideological tools in the 19th century scramble for Africa, with countries being created with seemingly arbitrary lines. The artist subverts this by superimposing images onto digital collages from across history to make us question the very nature of Africa as a Western concept and really powerful works. Samson Kambalu's Contingent 3 shows cardboard cutouts of African soldiers who fought for the British Empire in World War I and II. Cardboard is used to, to symbolise expendableness, whereas the fabric quilts challenge the very idea of countries in Africa. Delio Jesse um, found this collection of photographs in a flea market in Portugal. The photographs feature a Portuguese family in Mozambique. Yet there's very little evidence of these photographs being taken in Mozambique. Black Mozambicans' faces are hidden or clearly playing on the role of servants. Jesse superimposes passport and visa stamps, as you can see here, um, uh, emphasising, I think, how photographs often played an official propaganda role in the portrayal of colonial occupation of Africa. The final main curatorial theme moves from looking at the past and present to the future and um, it's a really interesting section with lots of different arts and a central installation which you can see here addressing many of both the different opportunities and threats that the continent of Africa faces from um, exploitation due to globalization to the climate emergency but also the potential of Africa with its growing population and um, vast wealth of natural resources. What I particularly enjoyed about this section was the way that it challenged my own Western perspective on African development, whether it was through um, the, the relations and links you'll see a bit later on to the proposed Zambia space program, um, to very different ways of looking at lack of water which is obviously a problem which afflicts certain areas of Africa um, the images constantly surprised and educated me as hopefully you'll see in this final section
I hope that that gave you a good sense of the exhibition, um, A World in Common. Um, I, straight off the bat, I really enjoyed it actually. Um, I think it did a good job of representing this vast and complex continent of 1.2 billion people. Geographically, we saw work from Algeria in the north, South Africa in the south, Ethiopia in the east, Nigeria and um, Ghana in the west and loads more besides. And I think that although obviously it's impossible to um, to cover such a comp complex and, and vast continent in any kind of detail. I thought that the curation of three themes, identity and tradition, counter histories, and imagined futures and um, really worked as sort of cohesive themes bringing these 30 plus I think it's 36 artists together I didn't feel overwhelmed and I spent a long time in there I learned a huge amount and obviously got to know many artists that I'd never heard of before um, it's not strictly just a photography exhibition there's a couple of installations and some film work as well and and I think it sort of hung together cohesively a couple of criticisms. I think the, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not just a contemporary um, art exhibition. There are some older photographs as well. And it might have been interesting to open that out further. Um, and secondly, um, lots and lots of the work is very, very pristine. It's staged. The exhibition starts with a really kind of calm note as we have a look at um, African leadership and also um, look at... Uh, at religious traditions as well and the use of the mask I enjoyed that for me the absolute highlight was the counter histories um, section of the show where we see um, where we see uh, artists experiment with form and technique and also see uh, um, some very very interesting um, engagement with both colonial history but with also the sheer diversity of, of, of Africa and this wall especially um, really summarises that I absolutely love that and um, it was just brilliant I thought that the, 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 the Imagine Future section was really good and the couple of film works right at the end were beautiful um, I thought that could even be more diverse and richer in some ways but overall I thoroughly enjoyed this I'd give it an 8 out of 10 I do recommend it um, and it's on all the way all the way till the 14th of January I think £17 is good value I spent two hours in there and if you're going to watch the all the video works four main video works plus others as well then you will need that time